Okay, hi, I'm Dr. Hayes. Uh, this is the split femur dissection at North Seattle Community College today. Okay, so this split femur is from an animal that walks on four legs. It's going to be a little different than what you see in humans because, first of all, humans are bipedal. Um, but there will be enough similarities in the comparison for you to understand both bones and joint structures. Let's start off by looking at whether this is a right or a left leg. Um, the way you can tell that is the articulation between the hip and the leg, which is indicated here at the ball and socket joint. Now this is a synovial joint um, that's going to have this ball structure on the end of the femur. So if you were to articulate that into the hip, this would be a right leg. The ball and socket joint articulate is part of the femur. It is the head of the femur, and the femur in this case is the bone right here. You'll notice that the femur in this animal is smaller than a typical femur that you would see in humans. Humans would have a larger femur than this. The tibia, which is the bone in the lower leg down here, in this animal is larger than the femur, and that is different than what you would see in humans. In humans, the femur is larger than that of the tibia. The other difference you'll see in the animals is that these animals have hooves, which will give them a little bit of a different bone structure in their foot than what we typically have in humans. So you'll see some differences down here as well in the foot joint. The knee joint is a typical synovial joint as well. Remember this is not a ball and socket joint but a hinge joint now and so it's going to move just like a hinge joint with flexion and extension. This particular femur and um, knee joint and tibia has been split in half so that we can see the inside of the bone. So the patella is cut in half. So on the left here is one part of the patella and on the right is the other part of the patella. Remember the patella is a short bone and so you'll find the spongy bone on the inside and the compact bone surrounding it. This particular patella also has articular cartilage that is very smooth um, and will articulate with the knee. In addition, you'll see the articular cartilage on the femur itself and we'll get into more detail of the knee joint in a little bit. The knee joint itself does not have any synovial fluid as that is no longer present um, when the animal is not alive. However, it does have other structures with the knee joint. You'll notice this membrane that's connecting the knee joint together. That membrane is the articular capsule and if we were to pull the knee back together with the patella you would see it would come back together to form the joint. We'll look at more detail of the knee joint in just a little bit. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and take the split femur and open it up in half so we can look on the inside of the bone. So this has taken the leg and we've cut it in half. So now you see the inside of the bone. So we're gonna start with the features of the bone. Now, the femur and the tibia are both long bones. And of course, in long bones, we're going to have some differences than we would see in the short bones. In the long bone, you're going to have the shaft or diaphesis and the ends of the bone or the epiphyses. Remember that the diaphesis is made up of compact bone, and if you were to feel the compact bone, it would be very, very hard. The ends of the bone, or the epiphyses, have the spongy bone in them, and despite the name spongy, it makes it sound like it would be very soft and porous, and it's not. It's actually a very hard structure as well. There is, if you'll notice, holes or porosity to the bone, and that is where the red marrow would be.
in the middle of the bone in the diaphesis, this is actually not red marrow, but yellow marrow. And it's a little different in consistency. It's very soft and actually quite fatty. If we were to remove the red marrow, the yellow marrow, we would see this red coloration, and that's simply due to blood vessels that have burst when the femur was cut. Notice, however, that there is no spongy bone in the diaphesis. It is hollowed out, and that's where the yellow marrow would sit inside the cavity. On the outside of the bone, the, there is a membrane that's covering the bone called the periosteum, and it's very tightly associated with the bone through Sharpie's fibers and doesn't really come off very well because it's so closely associated with it. But that would be the periosteum right there. And that would surround the entire bone. At the ends of the bone and the epiphysis, you'll notice this white line that's running through the bone. That white line is the epiphyseal plate. This is an adult animal, so the epiphyseal plate is fused and is no longer growing. In a younger animal, this would be much larger. Notice that both ends of the bone have that epiphyseal line, as well as the tibia. The femur and the tibia are both long bones, so these features will be the same on both of them. On the end of the bone, at the knee joint, you'll notice we have more articular cartilage here, and that's because we have the beginnings of the knee joint where you're going to need that articular cartilage to help reduce friction on the bone as the ends of the bone come over each other. Looking closer at the knee cavity, you'll notice this white structure that's connecting the tibia to the femur. And those are ligaments. You'll find in the knee multiple ligaments that are going to be important in its structure. You have knee ligaments that are going to run anterior, and you'll have external ligaments as well. In this view, we do not see the external ligaments, but we see the anterior ligaments there. Ligaments will also be present on the inside of the knee as well. Now this membrane that you see me kind of pulling away is part of the articular capsule that keeps the um, integrity of the synovial joint intact and keeps that synovial cavity together. You'll also notice some of this yellow tissue. That is fatty tissue. That fatty tissue um, is important in maintaining um, a cushion so that the knee, when it gets uh, bumped, it can actually protect it by um, cushioning the blow. This is the uh, bursa sac that's been um, cut open that you see there. You'll notice there's also the patella again that we saw earlier. And that patella is going to be put together um, with the patellar ligament which is a larger ligament connecting the patella to the tibia. Right here. Okay. That concludes the dissection of the split femur.